Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is Vivian Nguyen. I'm a candidate of pharmacy class of 2021 and today I will be going over a class of medication called glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonist, commonly referred as GLP-1 receptor agonist. First, I will be going over some patient counseling points. All GLP-1 receptor agonists are given as a subcutaneous injection in the stomach area, upper leg such as the thigh, or back of the upper arms. Make sure to tell patients to rotate their injection site. They can be given without regards to food. The two exceptions are Bayetta and Adlixin, which can be given within 60 minutes of meals. The most common side effects that patients may experience are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and headaches. This medication can cause pain and inflammation in the pancreas. Patients should stop taking it and let their healthcare provider know if experiencing severe stomach pains with or without vomiting. The pain can radiate from the abdomen through to the back. As for storage, do not store pen with needle attached. Remove the needle from the pen immediately after injection. This can help prevent any leakage of the medication from the pen and also air bubbles from forming in the cartridge. Pen injection devices should never be shared, even when the needle is changed due to risk for transmission of blood-borne pathogens. Keep pens and needles out of reach of children and pets. It's also important to let the patient know that the medication should be refrigerated until they are ready to use the pen. Now we will be going into detail about the GLP-1 receptor agonist. Here is a formal introduction of these drugs. GLP-1 receptor agonists are also known as incretin mimetics. These medications are used in addition to healthy eating and physical activity to lower blood glucose levels in people with type 2 diabetes. As you can see, there are several different kinds of GLP-1 receptor agonists available. All can be used alone or together with other medicines. The short-acting GLP-1 receptor agonist includes exenatide by Yetta, which is dosed twice daily, lixenatide adlixin, which is dosed once daily, and long-acting GLP-1 receptor agonist includes liraglutide victosa, which is dosed once daily. The rest will be dosed once weekly, and these include dulaglutide, which is known as trulicity, exenatide extended release, which is known as bidurion, and semiglutide, which is known as ozempic. There are pros and cons to using a GLP-1 receptor agonist. The pros of using a GLP-1 receptor agonist are that it does decrease A1C from 0.5 to 1.5%. It does cause weight loss, and some even contain ACBD benefits, the most being liraglutide, then semiglutide, and then exenatide extended release. Liraglutide does contain renal benefits. The cons of these medications is it comes in an injectable form, while other comes in oral form. Another factor to consider is cost. GLP-1 receptor agonists are pricey compared to spinorias and metformin. Now we're going to take a look at their mechanism of action. Some people with type 2 diabetes also do not make enough of a family of hormones called incretin. They include gastric inhibitory peptide GIP and glucagon-like peptide 1, GLP-1 receptor. The incretins are released from the gut or intestine after eating. GLP-1 receptor agonists are a class of medication that copy the action of naturally occurring GLP-1. When GLP-1 medications are released in the body, they do four things to help decrease blood glucose or blood sugar levels. The first is that they increase glucose-dependent insulin secretion. Insulin needs to be released when eating so that glucose from the meal can be used. This helps keep blood glucose levels stable during meals. Second, they slow down stomach emptying. GLP-1 medications help keep food in the stomach longer. That way, the body can absorb food better as it moves slowly through the intestine. Third, they reduce glucagon secretion. Glucagon secreted from the pancreas tells the liver to send glucose into the bloodstream. This helps keep blood glucose levels stable between meals. Fourth, it improves satiety, which can result in weight loss. Incretin receptor in the brain receives a signal so that the body knows it is time to stop eating. Focusing on dose adjustment. With these medications, we really don't need to worry about any dose adjustment for patients with hepatic problems. 
but renal function needs to be measured prior to initiation and monitored closely during therapy in patients taking exenatide by Yetta and exenatide extended release by Gerion. It is not recommended in patients with end-stage renal disease or a creatinine clearance less than 30. Also in lexanatide at Lixin, it's not recommended in patients with EGFR less than 15. Earlier, we were able to cover common side effects, but now we're going to go into more details with their adverse effects. With these medications, the adverse effects include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, antibodies. A large portion of patients develop antibodies to exenatide. However, there were no obvious consequences for its therapeutic efficacy. Patients also develop hypoglycemia, weight loss, and injection site reaction. Warning and precaution with this class of medication is that they do have a black box warning. Their black box warning applies to all except Bayetta and Adlixin. They have a risk of thyroid C cell carcinoma, which was seen in rats, but unknown if risk applies to humans. Avoid in personal or family history of medullary thyroid carcinoma, MTC, or patients with multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2, men too. It can cause pancreatitis, can be fatal, usually in patients with risk factors of history of pancreatitis, gallstone, alcoholism, or increased triglyceride. These medications are not recommended in patients with severe GI disease, including gastroparesis. Drug-specific warning and precaution is that Bigerion causes serious injection-like reactions such as abscess, cellulitis, necrosis, with or without subcutaneous nodules. Ozempic can increase complications with diabetic renopathy, and trilicity can cause cardiovascular events such as tachycardia, first-degree AV block, or PR interval prolongation. In patients who are starting these medications, some important monitoring parameters for efficacy are A1C. They should get it at least twice yearly in patients who have a stable glycemic control and are meeting treatment goal. And quarterly in patients not meeting treatment goal or with therapy changed. They should also monitor blood glucose for efficacy. For safety monitoring, check patients' renal function, especially in patients taking exenatide and lexanatide. Signs and symptoms of pancreatitis, INR in patients taking warfarin, and calcitonin levels for signs of medullary thyroid cancer. These are my references. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening, and I hope you guys enjoyed.